Hello, I'm Adrian Amos from Synergy Technical, and today we're talking about Windows 365. We've done a couple of webinars in the past about Windows 365, from the value proposition to basic connectivity to fundamentals of how you configure the service, whether it's the business or the enterprise SKUs. But today we're talking about connecting. Now, Microsoft has made the bold claim that we can connect to Windows 365 from any device that has a web browser and is capable of streaming movies. It just so happens I am in the deep country. I have an array of devices from different operating systems and different platforms in different ages, and we have just exactly enough deep country internet to be able to stream a movie. So I have a business class device that is running Windows Enterprise. I have its four-year-old younger brother from the same product line that's also running Windows Enterprise. I have a Chrome OS device sitting here too that we'll play with. And then I also have this brand new little Surface Go 2 for business. This thing is pretty exciting and I'm really, uh, really enjoying playing with it. Now I will say, full disclosure, I do not own any devices that picture partially eaten fruit. When I browse to windows365.microsoft.com, I'm presented with the option to open the device in a browser. Now, that's low-hanging fruit, and we've done that. I'm more interested in a download remote desktop option that should give me a richer experience across a breadth of platforms. When we click on that link, we're taken to a page that lets us download the app for our operating systems and provides a subscription URL to connect to our Windows 365 workspaces. If you're already using Azure Virtual Desktop, you may already have the app and don't worry, you can add Windows 365 to your available workspaces without losing what you already have. Now, since we're using the native apps for our devices today, it's worth talking about the capabilities of those apps. They do not all support the same level of integration or hardware optimization. Fortunately, I have a handy chart that breaks down all the currently supported connection clients. Let's take a look at that. All right, you can see on the left that Microsoft has the deepest integrations into its own ecosystem, and that is not a surprise, right? But before we get too excited about the fact that our 25-year-old mstsc.exe can connect to this environment, note that that tool does not support modern authentication and should not be considered for anything beyond a laboratory deployment. Also worthy of note is that there are still two more Microsoft branded options. The first one is the one that you see on the Windows 365 remote desktop apps page. And the second one is available in the Microsoft Store. They share a logo and they share a name, but they actually behave very differently. You'll also note that there is no Chrome OS app, but the Android app works fine for both my Chromebook and my Samsung phone in DeX mode. Here I am in my remote desktop app. I double click on this guy and it's able to use the Windows Hello hardware that exists inside this machine to authenticate me. So I don't have to type in any icky passwords here. Right there, it knows who I am. I click OK and it lets me write in. Once I'm in, I'm in. This is just Windows on Windows. Uh, the application's smart resize, if I need to change things up or pin or drag or maximize or whatever I want to do, it all just works exactly like I would expect it to do with the native Windows client. And if I need to switch applications, right, it's all persistent, I can close this session and pick it up right here next to me on the very next machine. All right, so we're in on the older machine. And I gotta say the performance, the experience, everything is exactly the same. Right? I'm able to switch applications, I'm able to switch windows, I'm able to switch tabs, I'm able to jump around. There's my matrix that we were just looking at a moment ago. Right, Everything is exactly the same. In fact, it's so much the same that had this service existed when it was time for me to replace this computer with this one, I'm not 100% sure that I would have. And the Chromebook is likewise easy to use, though I do have to enter my password to authenticate. In my experience so far of using the Chromebook to access Windows 365, the only performance degradation I've noticed is that audio on YouTube videos tends to crackle a little bit. But that's not really a big issue because you know what, if you wanna watch a YouTube video, you're probably gonna watch it on the actual device itself. But we're in this weird ethereal space now of running Windows on top of Chrome OS, which is really kind of cool, but it does feel a little bit like running an upgraded Raspberry Pi. Now we already know that the camera is not going to work and I don't really need to prove that out. We know it's not going to work. It says it's not going to work. But if I need a user to actually join a Teams meeting from a Chrome OS device, well, there is Teams for the actual device itself for Chrome OS. And if I want to join a meeting or create a new meeting right here, I can turn the camera on and you can see the camera works just fine and the user is going to be able to join this meeting. Now, 
This may or may not gel with your device management strategy. If you're comfortable decoupling the experience of teams from the, uh, other, from the other part of the corporate managed environment, this may work for you. Otherwise, you might have to move down the line here and work with a device that's a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to ship, and a whole lot easier to use. So I mentioned that this device came to me running Windows 10 Enterprise, and that means that I can join it to my Azure Active Directory, I can manage it with Intune, and I can roll it into Defender for Endpoint, I can manage its compliance, I can do all kinds of wonderful stuff, control its antivirus, I can encrypt it, I can deploy it with Autopilot, I can do the entire Microsoft 365 experience. And that might be really important to you as you're looking to expand your footprint, your corporate device footprint, move it out into users that may be coming to you uh, from disparate locations on the planet, right? You want to make sure that you can control not just the experience within th Windows 365, but also the experience of the user getting to that environment, right? So it's conditional access inside the environment, and conditional access gaining access to it in the first place. And while on paper, this machine is no more powerful than the one sitting over there that's four years old, we've already proven out that in Windows 365, that doesn't really matter. The actual device that we're running all of our workloads on is sitting in the cloud and it's not really impacted by the speed of the hardware that we're connecting from. It's not got the same challenges that the Chrome OS device has that has no camera support or, or the crackly audio challenges that come through here. In fact, for the last several days, I've been joining all of my corporate meetings from this device connected through Windows 365. And so far, the only feedback I've gotten from my coworkers is that in general, my audio actually sounds better. What I do want to call out about this, though, is that I have gone to the trouble here of adding both versions of the remote desktop app. And this one right here that I don't have launched is the one that comes from the Microsoft Store. This is the one that has slightly different compatibility matrix. Um, and again, they have the exact same logo. They have the exact same name. If I come in here and I find the one that pertains to my name, because again, we have multiple domains in here. We have multiple experiences and environments. This time it's going to fail to be able to use Windows Hello appropriately because the camera's already in use. That's all right. I can use a pin as a backup, still not typing in passwords like I had to do on the Chrome OS device. It's going to get me access into my Windows 365 PC. I should still have all the same applications, should have all the same functionality and everything else rolling in here. So there you have it. For the devices and operating systems and network connectivity I have here in the deep country, Windows 365 connects and reliably and performs the same. Some features and functionality change, but Microsoft has delivered on the promise of anywhere from any device that has a web browser and can stream movies. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to catch the webinars that cover the configuration and deployment, look in the description below. And if you found this video useful, please click like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future updates. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.